So, there you go. So what we want to do today. Thank you. All right. So today's lesson. Let's talk about today's lesson. So if you start off with this particular identity, where you've got a sine of some angle plus the cosine of the same angle, you can rewrite it as a single sine function, okay? You go sine of a, sine of theta plus sine, cosine of b could be a k sine of x plus phi. Now phi is a different angle. X is the variable. In fact, x should probably be theta in this case, okay? Or whatever the variable is. Um, so to do that, you need to find k. k is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So it's the square root of that number plus that number, okay? And you need to find phi, which is an angle. To find phi, you can either do cosine inverse, you're going to have to do cosine inverse of the a over the square root of a squared plus b squared, or you can do the sine inverse of b over the square root of a squared plus b squared, okay? So let's take a look at the first example. We're going to go ahead and do this. So um, I'm flipping over. I really want to do example three first, okay? So let's look at example three. So example three, here it is. We're left with a sine plus a cosine. Same variable, same angle, but we want to rewrite as a single sine. So what we do is we look at our formula, okay? So in order to go and read us, rewrite as a k sine of x plus 5, we're going to find k first. k is pretty easy to find. So this would be a, this would be b, and k is just going to equal o square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is, you know, 9 plus 16 which is 5. Everybody agree with that? But you probably already knew that because you already knew about a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, right? But it is square root of 25, and Raul's right. That's just 5. Everybody agree? Okay, so here's what I know. I will eventually write a 5 here. I'll go 5 sine. So I've got part of the answer. So I'm going to rewrite this as it's going to equal 5 sine of, in this case, x plus, we need 5. Okay, so the next piece to find what 5 is, and then we have two choices. It doesn't really matter. We're either going to use the cosine or the sine. It does not matter. Um, why not just cosine? There it is. So we're going to go, okay, cosine of phi, which is this other angle we need to find here, um, is equal to the a, which is the 3. Okay, we're going to go the a over 5, right? This is, we already found out this was 5. So we're going to go just the 3 over 5. That's not phi. To find phi, you need an angle. We need to use the inverse button. So we're just going to go cosine inverse of my 3 over 5. Degree mode, right? Degree mode. Degree mode. Use my calculator. Um, cosine inverse. Hold on, turn it on. Clear. Cosine inverse of 3 divided by 5, and we get an answer for about 53.1, okay? So we can finish this up. Our answer should look like this. A 5 sine of x plus 53.1 degrees is an equivalent to our original, okay? And our original is in terms of sine plus cosine, and now we've rewritten it as a single sine term. So that's not so bad, okay? All right, should we turn it over and look at the hard stuff? All right, so let's do example two first. What I really need to do is rewrite this worksheet and reverse everything because the, the question number one really becomes the hardest question. So let's look at example two, okay? So first of all, whenever you see this symbol, whenever you see this symbol, you're looking for an angle, okay? Cosine inverse of x is going to be an angle. Okay, tangent inverse of y is going to be some angle. Okay, the inverse is the angle. So we get some little information here, um, and what we want to do is you need to know. Oh, I need to add some information to this. Let's put this one cosine, sine, cosine. Oh, I want to back up. You know what? I want to do. I'm going to do example one first. I'm saving this one. This is the hard one. Let's wait on this one, okay? Let's back up to this one, okay? Um, okay, evaluate sine theta plus phi, where sine is two, 12 thirteenths in quadrant 2, and phi is tangent 
of 3 fourths and quadrant 3. So whenever we see quadrants, let's draw a triangle. So quadrant 2, quadrant 3, let's draw a triangle. You can see why, you, later on we do 2, you'll see why I'm leaving it for the, for the end, okay? So quadrant 2, let me go ahead and just draw a triangle, okay? So go like this, quadrant 2, I'm going to draw a right triangle, draw a right triangle in quadrant 2. That'd be quadrant 2. Um, and this is a different angle. This is theta. So we'll put, we'll put theta here. And this is going to be phi, which is going to be a different triangle, okay? And that one's in quadrant 3, so we draw a triangle in quadrant 3. And let's put phi right here, okay? So totally different triangle, right? Let's see what I know. I know that sine is going to be my opposite of my hypotenuse. So if I take my angle in quadrant 2, my opposite is 12, and my hypotenuse is 13, okay? What I probably ought to do is find the adjacent side, and by Pythagorean theorem, that's pretty easy. I'll just do my, you know, my x squared plus my 12 squared equals 13 squared. It is 5. And if you don't know, um, you can do the math, but it will be turned out to be 5. It's a 5, 12, 13. I can show you real quick on the calculator. If you went 13 squared and you said it at least, we're going to subtract. Totally right. Subtract. 25 squared to 25, right, which is 5. Everybody agree with that? So we get x is 5, but x is really negative 5 because if we're in quadrant 3, we've got to go back to it, right? All right? So it's really negative 5, okay? Good. Now, the next thing we're going to do with that is now look at quadrant 3, okay? Phi is a different angle, right? So um, what am I going to need to do then is set that up. I know tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. So my opposite is my 3, my adjacent is my 4, right? No, wrong. It's really negative 3 and negative 4 because we go back and down, right? To graph a point here, we go back and then down. And we knew that right here, it was a negative 3 over a negative 4, but, well, we would be good mathematicians, and we would have canceled those negatives, right? Right? So we wouldn't have written it as negative 3, negative 4, but it really was originally negative 3 over negative 4 because you go back, forward, down 3. But nobody would write those negatives. You cancel the negatives, okay? But they are negative, okay? Now, the last thing you need to do is find this side. Hopefully, you know, that's 5. It is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, but it really is um, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals r squared Pythagoras theorem, you'll end up with the square root of 25, so r is 5. Now, the radius is always positive because it's a length, okay? x can be negative, y can be negative, but the radius has got to be positive. That's 5, okay? So what do we do with this? Well, what we're going to do is take a look at last night's notes. We're like, wait a minute. I think I have this sine theta plus cosine phi. I think that's the sum. So let's see, where's last night's notes? Yeah. They're around here somewhere, aren't they? Around five. Well, where's my notes from yesterday? Oh, here they are. I found them. Got them. So, sine theta plus phi. It's that one right there, right? Yeah. So, let's rewrite. Let's write what this is. Let's write our formula down. So, it's going to be a sine theta cosine phi plus cosine theta sine phi, right? Well, let's go to theta. Here's my theta triangle. And the sine of that sine is opposite of hypotenuse, so I'm going to put 12 thirteenths right there. Okay, one more time. Sine of theta. We'll go to my triangle, my theta triangle. Sine is opposite of hypotenuse, so it's over 13. Okay, cosine of phi. Let's go to my Phi triangle, that's right there. And cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be my negative 4 over 5. All right. Plus cosine of theta, go to my theta triangle, and cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be a negative 5 over 13 times the sine of phi, and go to my phi triangle, sine is going to be my opposite of hypotenuse, which is my negative. 3 over 5. Okay, now I'm just going to simplify the fractions. I can do that. I'll get a negative 48 over 65 
plus a 15 over 65. Um, they have a common denominator, so I can just add them. The common denominator is 65. And what is a 48 and a negative 15, or a negative 48 and a 15, is a negative 33. Okay. So the exact value of sine theta plus phi, where sine is 12 thirteenths and tangents 3 fourths, the exact value is negative 33 65. Okay. All right, now let's do example two. Okay, now example two is a little harder. The only problem with example two is that we're going to get an answer in terms of x. Up here we had numbers, right? We had numbers, okay? Um, we're going to have to get an answer in terms of x. So this one gets to be a little bit tricky, but I'm going to go through it slowly with you. All right, so first of all, we're going to take a look at a triangle, okay? So first of all, we're going to have x and y. So I'm going to use two different triangles again, all right? So let me draw first a triangle, okay? First triangle I'm going to draw is going to be my x triangle. So it's going to be my x triangle. Second draw, triangle I draw, and I don't know how big they are. I'm just going to draw a right triangle. That's all I know. Second triangle draw I draw is going to be my y triangle, okay? Now, inverse means angle. Since I've got x and y and two different triangles, it's two different angles. You can call the angles anything you would like. I like... I like theta, and I like phi. And I like theta and phi a whole lot because, hey, guess what our notes look like? Thetas and phis, right? So let's stick with thetas and phis. It just makes it easy for us, okay? So we put theta here. And let's make this the phi triangle, okay? What are we going to do with that? Well, I know cosine of this angle is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Now I put a 1 there because as a fraction... You've got x over 1, okay? Tangent of y, I've got phi. And tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. I'll put a 1 right there because that's like a y over 1, all right? Because you need a fraction in order for it to be opposite over adjacent. You need a fraction for it to be adjacent over hypotenuse, okay? Now, what I don't know are these other sides, okay? I'm going to have to use Pythagorean's theorem. Now, the answer I'm going to get is going to be in terms of x because I don't have any, I don't have a number here. So let's do Pythagorean's theorem. Let's just go, all right, x squared plus, let's call it b squared for right now, b squared equals 1 squared, okay? Okay, I'm just working on this right triangle right here, and I need to find its adjacent or its opposite side. So really, b squared is going to equal 1 minus x squared because I bring over the x, right? 1 minus x squared. And then I'm going to square root it. I'm going to get b is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Don't square root those. Don't square root those. That is it. Okay, you can't square root them because you have to be able to subtract them first. Okay, so this is my other side, my opposite side. And this triangle in my theta triangle is going to be equal to a 1 minus an x squared. Okay, how am I doing? So far, so good? Maybe. Okay, I got to do the same thing on this triangle. Okay. I'm missing this side. Let's find it by Pythagorean's theorem. So let's go 1 squared plus y squared equals c squared, right? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I'm really going to get, if I take the square root of the square root of 1 plus y squared, if I take the square root of that, right, square root to solve for c. So don't square root these. You have to be able to add them before you can square root it. So that is the answer. So my hypotenuse is simply a 1 plus y squared, okay? Now, what am I going to do? Well, we're going to look at our forms. We have sine. This is kind of like, this is an angle, right? We said that was an angle. We said that was an angle. So we really could write this expression as it's a sine of theta plus phi, right? Because this angle was the theta angle and this angle we called the phi angle, okay? So sine of theta plus phi, let's look at yesterday's notes. Sine of theta plus phi is going to be our very first addition. It's that one right there, okay? We've got sine of theta plus phi, sine of theta, cosine of phi, cosine theta, sine of phi. So let's write that down. So we're going to have a sine theta, cosine phi, 
plus a cosine theta sine of phi, all right? So I recognize that this was an angle. Inverse means it's an angle. I recognize that this was an angle. Inverse means angle. So the angles I called it were theta and phi. We like that because we know our formulas are in terms of theta and phi. So instead of writing as cosine inverse, I wrote as just the angle. So writing as tangent inverse, I just wrote as the angle. Then I was able to locate that identity on my identity sheet. Okay, now let's finish this up. So I go to my triangle, my theta triangle, okay? I need to do the sine of theta. So I go to theta, sine is opposite of hypotenuse, right? So if I look at this, my sine of this angle is going to be square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, okay? And I'll put the over 1. I don't need it, but there it is, over 1. Opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of phi. So I go to my phi triangle, right? And my phi triangle then is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse for cosine, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be 1 over the square root of 1 plus y squared. Plus, okay, cosine of theta. Go to my theta triangle. Here it is. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be a 1. Adjacent, which is going to be my x over my 1 times my sine of phi. Now, here's my phi triangle. Sine is going to be the opposite of hypotenuse, which is going to be simply going to be my y over my square root of 1 plus y squared. Okay? Wow, this is a tough problem, huh? Let's just simplify we're done. So I'm going to finally get an answer. If I put these together, I can multiply square root of 1 minus x squared over the square root of 1 plus y squared plus xy over the square root of 1 plus y squared. I can add them because they have a common denominator. So let's combine them. I can put these two together. So I'm going to go this, square root on the bottom, 1 plus y squared, because that is the same on both, right? That's their common denominator. It's kind of an ugly out common denominator. I would agree with that. And on the numerator, we're just going to go, okay, the square root of 1 minus x squared plus an xy. And that, unfortunately, is the answer. Where are you ever going to use this in calculus? When you get to Calc 2, second year of calculus, you're going to need to know how to do this stuff, okay?